Welcome to another episode of literally the coolest podcast on the planet with the coolest listeners on the planet. We have lunch with amazing people, and while they feed their face, we steal their sauce. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. Oh. Oh. It's my biggie. Oh. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. This is going off the rail already. Yo, I feel good. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. My name is Gerald Davis. I'm the host, and I'm not the cool kid you are. Man, wherever you're at, however you're doing your thing, however you're consuming this, right now, you're at the lunch table. I was going to say something. Man, y'all, I worked on that for a very long time, and... What happened is I came in hot. That's what I did. I came in overconfident. Like, I was like, I was basically Pat Beverly. Like, I thought that I was better than what I was, and I paid for it. I'm sorry, y'all. Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. (laughs) Welcome to Lunch with the Cool Kids. I'm your host, Gerald Davis. However you listen to this, thank you so much for listening to it. Do me a favor. um, Write a review. Five stars. I don't care a lie. If you're on Apple... Just lie. I don't care. Best lie you can come up with. I appreciate it. Um, I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. Um, We got a lot to talk about today. We have an incredible guest. And um, we're going (laughs) to... I'm laughing. Uh, I'm sorry for the people who uh, can't see me. I'm laughing because I'm thinking that, man, this week, this month, rather... It's Women's Month. So shout out to the women. It's a good time to be a woman. I think it's a good time to be a woman. Um, so shout out to all the women. You've, you've paid your dues long enough. It's about time that you get your own month. I'm, uh, I'm going to bring my guest in real quick, and I want to <laughs> talk to her about it. Um, this is my friend, y'all. This is my friend for at least, oh my Lord, let's be conservative and say 15 years. Um, We were were little kids together trying to figure out this wacky thing called college. And man, now we're grown. Um, She's amazing. I'm um, I'm fumbling intros. (laughs) That's what I'm doing. But we're, you know, we're here and um, a lot of people have come and gone, but, you know, we're here and I'm very excited to introduce her to the lunch table, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll give you a little bit more about her, but ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the lunch table, Miss Casey Coleman. Welcome. Where's <laughs> my... <laughs> Casey, my precious Casey. My precious, precious Casey. Here. How in the world are you? I am here. I'm, I'm here. Listen. I am here. Listen, let me tell you something. I, I, I wanted to, because I was going to, I was going to talk to, I was going to bring you in like maybe five minutes later, but I got so interested in congratulating mm. you on this woman's month that you guys have that I wanted to come in and just say, hey, y'all did it after all this time. Y'all, Thank you. y'all Thank got you. y'all got y'all woman's month. And I feel especially excited for the black women because man, y'all y'all doubling up. Listen. So Women's Month, Black History Month, we in here. Black History's month. You got a whole February. And then March comes. You come back around. You, and you, my birthday is in January, so I'm coming in hot. The whole top of the year, this is me. This has been a good quarter for you. Listen, this coming is, in strong. This has been a good quarter for you. I think that, um, I think as women, y'all pay y'all dues. You know, childbirth, sexism, oppression, menstrual cycles, all of that stuff. You guys earned March. We earned a know. full a full month. <laughs> I earned it because I got my three year old to bed on time. Like, this is. This is pure God alignment. She was asleep by eight oh five. 
<laughs> Normally, she's up fight with me. Man, let me, hey. let me tell you, I, um, my first couple of kids, I was a, I, 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 like, my first two, I was a good parent. Like, the last one, like, look, <laughs> look, I, however you, y'all figure it out. Y'all can get to bed. So. She is a no-limit soldier, okay? Don't I, be surprised if she comes running in here. <laughs> look, I, look, I commend you for being, let's see. Being born in January, so you got that going for you. Yep, you being black, so you got that going for you in February. And like you're like Joe Biden black. You're not like you know. <laughs> you're not like mm-hmm. make let's make America great again black. So you know that worked out for you. And then Absolutely. then you come out in March, and you end up being a mother. You're a woman and your yeah, mother. You, you got a good run. I, I had a good run, and I didn't ask for this. I tell anybody I prayed for an apartment and a little white dog. That was it. And that's that what I prayed. <laughs> and that's what you don't have. You have everything. The dog is downstairs. Oh, <laughs> what color is? It? What color is the, the dog? dog? White. What color white. is? Oh, white. Okay. He is white. He is downstairs. We're just gonna pray that he doesn't see a street light and start barking. Like an idiot. He 100% will. 100% no. will. Uh, what's the dog's name? His name is Albus, like Harry Potter. Albus Dumbledore. His full name is Albus Dumbledore. Call me. Why? <laughs> he responds to it. So that's, <laughs> that's his name. Actually, Albus Dumbledore Fly called me. Excuse me. Because I had him before I got married. So I made it. Here we are. Okay. Here, here we are. Okay. A couple of things I want to get into because, um, uh, because you're amazing, and not just because you're you just generally amazing, but you're amazing because um, you went through, and I'm not going to steal your thunder or tell your story, um, but you went through what most of, I'll say most of us, but I've never actually had a child, so. I don't know about that part, but you went through what what most of us and most women go through, um, and you. W- one thing that I, I love about you and your whole journey is that where most people get stuck, you push through, and you're on the other side, and you're amazing. So I want um, I want I want to start out by first of all telling. Um, Telling us what is your business? Uh, Fly Girl Fitness. Uh, I train virtually and in person, one on ones, very limited because I do have a full time job, so I do still work. Um, but I do have a few private clients and I do some group sessions, online nutrition coaching. I offer if I need to come kick your dough in and make sure you do what you're supposed to do, I will come kick your dough in and make sure you do what you're supposed to do. Uh, so I'm a virtual coach. I'm an in-person coach, personal trainer, whatever you want to call it, however it jams for you. That's what I do. I I want to help women. I don't want them to look like me. I want them to look better than me. Mm. So you know, how, Some how, of this is genetics. <laughs> so you don't want women to look like Olivia Pope. Okay. Let me ask you. No. Let me ask you, how did your fitness journey start? Fun fact, it actually started before I got pregnant. Um, Really? uh, Everybody knows that my husband, in addition to everything else that he does, he's a musician. A cold one, too. I will tell him you said that. Hey, please Uh, do. (laughs) He had an event that he was attending, a very well-publicized on-TV event in L.A. that he was going to. I couldn't go fast, right? Mm. So I hired my trainer that I met when I was living in Shreveport. Said, hey, I got an event. I got two months. I'm trying to drop at least 20 pounds in two months. Did it. Done. He's amazing. Came back. Boom. Pregnant. I was like, well, I already started working out now. (laughs) So I actually worked out the entire time I was pregnant. Belly and all. The guys used to see me coming in the gym. They had no idea I was pregnant. And finally, one of the guys was like, whoa. Where did that come from? Because I've been wearing t-shirts. Uh, I didn't know that was a thing. I didn't know you could do that. 
I checked in with my doctor. She said, keep doing what you're doing. Um, as long as it's not causing you any pain, you're not having any medical issues, you're not high risk, keep doing what you're doing. So I would go lift a little. I was probably working out 30 minutes mm. a few times a week. Nothing major. I would walk because um, I had a lot of swelling. And I probably worked out three days a week, maybe four if I felt like it. Until I was about seven and a half months pregnant. Then it all just kind of went downhill from there. Yeah, it, it gets kind of real. But, after that. Uh, yeah. yeah. At that point, like, I couldn't see my feet anymore. And I started swelling to the point where I couldn't wear shoes. So at that point, it was it was a, it was a loss. Let's take a, little, point, let's take a little time but off. I started to... <laughs> No, I was just saying we'll let, we'll t- we'll take a little time off, drop this kid, and then come back to it. I'll be back. You know, I'll, I'll be back. And as soon as they released me, I started back slow. Um, I was doing Zumba in my bedroom while she was asleep or taking naps. Hmm. Once the doctor said, "I think you're good after this C-section," grab some weights, and I hit it, and the rest is history. Truly, the rest is history. Okay, so are you a driven person? Are you like naturally like I I have a goal and I crush it or or somewhere in the middle or who who are you? Once I get my mind set on something, I'm like a dog with a bone. Now, I might have to reassess and kind of go back and this isn't really working. I need to do something different, but once my mind is on it, that's it. COVID really helped. Um How so? I had, I had nothing to do. I put it like this. I was on maternity leave from October until like January of, of 2020. I was back in the, I went back to work for not even 30 days when they sent us home to see if our infrastructure could handle the entire company being out for whatever they thought may happen. I never went back to work after that. Mm. And here we are, what is it? Three years, four years later, I still have not been back into the office. Um, Shit. So, shout, shout out to I was at home. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to the office, man. Nobody, no, nobody's going back. I, you know what? I hate. Um, I'm not coming. <laughs> dude, dude. So I hate. Um, I hate working from home. I absolutely do. Like because I'm a people person, and like I love people. Yeah. I, I love talking to people. I love high fiving people. Like that whole thing. Um, like. I, My headphones just cut off while I was talking. That's amazing. Absolutely. It's a little unstable. It's all good. Um, say something else. You, you, sound, you sound okay. Am I good? Yeah, you're good. Then we're going to run on and see what the end going to be. There it is. Yeah. So, so, like, I'm a, you may not know this, but I was voted uh, one of the top five funniest people on Facebook. I did not know that. It's true. I did not even know that was a thing. It's one hundred percent true. Um, okay, absolutely, of course. Yeah, it's like it's Kevin Hart, it's Will Ferrell, it's um, Jess Hilarious. Okay. Um, Colin Powell and me. That's a thing. Of course, I mean, it makes sense. That's a thing. So uh, I'll take Barack over Colin Powell, but still, you know, whatever. Colin Powell is hilarious. He's hilarious. Like he's the, I don't know. I, I don't know. I was going to go down that road. I have no idea. <laughs> shout, shout, out, shout out to Colin Powell. Come on the show. But I believe you. Yes. I'm going to go with you. Oh. So me and, Absolutely. So me and Colin Powell. He's watching. Yeah. Of course he is. I'm sure he will. I'm sure he is. I'm sure he is. Um, so yeah, I don't get to, I don't get a chance to try out my jokes. I don't get a chance to, you know, encourage the wonderful people. So, uh, yeah, I just hate, I just hate being at home, but you know, it works. It works for our life. It works for our life. So, yeah. Know. Yeah. I hated it at first. I was miserable. I went back to work because I was tired of being at home by myself. Did you? And then boom, they sent us back home. I was miserable. Yeah, man. It, it, and then I, I kind of got into a groove, like. I'm going to get my nails done. I got a hair appointment. Like, I'm good now. I got two workouts I need to finish before 3 o'clock. Oh, so you... I got a whole little setup now. You're one Great. of those people. Man, I hope the job ain't watching. So you're one of those people <laughs> that were like, hey, y'all, I'm here. And then you go to uh, TJ Maxx and Benihana's. 
and live the Headphones drip. in, get my hair braided. <laughs> Boom. With the laptop, sitting in the braid shop, live, working it out. Living the dream. I think we need to switch jobs. That's the issue. That's what the it's issue is. So, <laughs> so you're on this you're on this fitness journey. And um, so at what point, let me ask you this. Um, at what point did you feel like that um, I'm starting to see significant progress? Mm, it probably took about six solid months. Okay, that's what, right? we, that's what we don't want to hear. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what they always say. They always say, you're going to be the last person to notice right? What's happening to your body because you see yourself, you see yourself every day, but it took about six months for me to like fully see that my body had changed. Other people saw it. They would tell me, Oh my God, you look so good. Oh my God, you lost all this weight. All that. I'm just here with a kid and I don't know what I'm doing. And you say that, but I still got back fat. So Mm. even now I'm like, still buying large pants and I know I need a small, like it's, it's a mind thing, but your body will start to change. So if you do it right, your body will start to change easily in 30 days. Okay. So you're rocking and rolling. You're, you're starting to change everybody. Like, Oh my God, look at you. You, you're so, you're, you're such a small Casey. (laughs) You're, you're amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, you don't believe it. Then one day you look up like, Oh yeah, look at me. I am small. So I'll tell you, I'll tell you me. Um, once I hit my goal, I'm done. <laughs> done. So <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. I have a slim gym and a zebra cake in both my hands. <laughs> the moment I hit my weight. Um, I had some pizza earlier. So see, Where's that? That we don't need to hear that is the issue. <laughs> <laughs> we, don't need to, we, we don't need to hear that. Um, so you get to, you get to that point. You're skinny Casey, mm-hmm. you're floating around everywhere, you know, roller skates and pigtails. You're doing well. At what point, um, because this is what, this is really what I want our our listeners to to grab a hold of. At what point did you say, okay, I've hit my goal. Now I have enough to offer somebody else who's trying to get to the same place. At what point did you do that? And what, what was the turning point that said, I want to, like, I think I can do this. It was probably, gosh, was it two years ago? Has it been two years? Maybe a year and a half ago. Um, like, late 2021. I had been toying with the idea. Like, I think I could probably do this. Most people forget my dad was a personal trainer before he passed away, after he retired from the fire department. So I always had. I didn't know that the know-how. I always knew what to do, right? I Mm. just didn't. Um, Ain't that that most of us, though? Ain't that really most of us? It is, and I actually found out after my dad passed away from my husband, who, of course, I thought he was lying. And um, probably over the Christmas holiday, I went and met up with one of his old client and she was just beside herself she was so happy. she said oh your dad wanted this for you he wanted this for you for so long wow. and he used to always tell us that he wasn't worried about it because one day you were gonna figure it out you were gonna get it and i was like me wow. not my brother me not junior me i was like i'm not working out i'm not going to no park going outside i just got my nails done i want to learn how to play catch and <laughs> Here I am going, Dad, look, I got muscles. <laughs> but, yeah, he he kind of lit the fire. And my trainer was like, you should do this. Like, you're motivating people. Like, I know you see these people starting to follow you. And they're telling you, oh, my God, I've been following you. Because he used to record me working out. And I would have my baby. Mm. Like, I would, I have to find the video. I have a video of me doing, like, some leg lifts. And I have the carrier, like strapped on and she's like fidgeting and I would work out actually right in here on the floor with the baby and they were like he was like people need to know that people need to see that about you you are actively losing weight after having this kid and I was like oh I don't know I don't know I don't know 
And one night I I went to bed because I'm going to go to sleep. And <laughs> my phone was just blowing up, blowing up. He had posted my result pictures and was like, this girl is going to be the next hottest trainer in Houston. And all these ladies were like, oh, my God, can you train me? Can you train me? And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want me to do? And that was it. And so I, I, he threw me out there. I wasn't ready. I didn't have a choice. And I started taking clients just like, okay, I guess. And that's generally how it happens. We'll try and see what happens. <laughs> like, I love how that yeah. happens because it doesn't, it doesn't happen when you're like, uh, okay, as of tomorrow, I'm going to start and then I'm going to be ready. <laughs> And then mm-hmm. everything's going to be perfect. I'm going to go out and get my LLC and then the whole world is going to open yeah. up. It it doesn't happen like that. And most people that go into business that, I don't want to say fail at business, but who struggle harder than them. <laughs> I don't want to say fail. Y'all cool kids, I'm not going to say fail. That, that struggle a little bit harder than they yeah. need to is because they're trying to make sure that everything's perfect instead of just starting. Mm-hmm. Like, and dude, I just and people saw, and people saw what you were already doing. It's two things that people respond mm-hmm. to. People respond to confidence, and people respond to results. Mm-hmm. And. I don't, and that's one thing, man. It really grinds my gears. Um, in 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 the photography world, that so many people try to get all of these things together, and like, man, this is going to be my business model, and this is going to be my business plan, and I got, I got all these tiers and things like that. But you have no picture, <laughs> like you have mm-hmm. no physical thing that people can look at and say, oh, he's yeah, talented. Show me what you can do. Because that's all that really matters. That's yes. all that really matters is, is that you, For sure. you are moving forward and you start mm-hmm. and you have some sort of social proof and somebody's going to hop on. Somebody's going to hop on. And what's that? And once somebody. You, somebody. It doesn't matter if that's For a sure. good body. It's just going to be a body. And once that one person hops on, mm-hmm. people... And I want you to talk about this because I I think this is going to help somebody. Out of all of the social media world that we live in, still the greatest form of marketing is word of mouth. To this day. For sure. so, somebody saying, oh, yeah, man, I was sure. not feeling great. I Man, I worked out with Casey. Casey got me right. What? That's for sure. So you so you get your first client. For sure. You get your first mm-hmm. you get your first client. How was that? Cuz I I would imagine it wasn't perfect. It wasn't. I actually like I was like, you know what? Let me train you for 30. I'll train you for free. Like I don't even now like I people are like, "Oh, you just sent me an invoice." And I'm like, "Oh, girl, I never started doing it for the money, right? Like I genuinely just enjoyed helping people. And in a time when we were all sitting at home looking crazy, like I was able to like interact with people, see people, put hands on people. And it takes a while, even now, and I've been doing it for a while, to find a groove with people and to figure out what they respond to. Mm. Um, Especially like in a one-on-one setting, in a group setting, I'm kicking butt for 45 minutes. We're going in, we're going hard, we're going fast for 45 minutes. But one-on-one is a little different um, because they may have some limitations that we need to work around. It's the mental things we got to get under control what ty- around nutrition. What, what and type all of mental? Of that. What type of mental things? Women have a bad misconception that lifting weights are going to make them bulky. Right? Mm. That's the thing. I don't want to lift too heavy. I'm going to look like a bodybuilder. No, you're bulking because you eat too much. That's that's how that works. That's the wrong type of bulk. Um, <laughs> yeah, and there's a there's a thing about nutrition where you think, no, I'm only supposed to eat 1,200 calories or 500 calories. Yeah, that's not accurate. That's 
that's not even the amount of food that you want a toddler to have, right? And to show people you can eat 1,700, 1,800, 2,000 calories a day, it's what you're eating. We can figure the calorie count out later. Weight loss is science. You need a calorie deficit, small calorie deficit, not enough to kick your body into starvation mode where you're now holding on to weight and fluid because you're starving yourself. But you're also not consuming more calories than you burn in a day. It's, you know, when you break it down to math, got the math, right? The, the math, and the math. People got... have these notions about keto and, and low carb and no carb and vegan and all this other crazy stuff. And it's like, you don't have to do any of that unless you really just want to. So let me tell you, you really don't have to. let me tell you. So I'm a vegan fool. No, I'm, I, I lied. I don't know why I just said that. I'm a keto <laughs> fool. I'm a keto fool. And um, anytime okay, so that, <laughs> anytime that I'm just like, man, this is, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm jiggling and it's not good. I'm like, man, let me go ahead, knock this keto out real quick, and drop these fifty pounds. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, I can do it, and it's all good. The only problem is, is that, like I said, as soon as I hit that weight, I got the Slim Jim and the Zebra Cake. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as you have some bread, it's a dub, it's, and you start over from scratch. It's it, and I'm right back where I am. So what 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 do we need to do? I don't want, I don't want you to give your whole sauce away because they got to talk to you. But I mean, like, what do we need to do? Prioritize protein, um, and be mindful of carbs. Don't I eat bread? Bread is good. Bread uh, is good. And you, bread is good. And you need, you need carbs. Carbs are a source of energy. You need that. Um, so it's not bad. You just have to be mindful of how those carbs fit in your overall day. Like if I'm cutting, I might consume 1,700 calories a day. But I also need 150 grams of protein. So mm. I have to prioritize those protein calories, which is, probably about 50% of the calories I eat in a day. And then I let the carbs and the fats take up the rest. Okay. So in keto, so you have to make it make sense. Yeah. Okay. It's making sense because in keto land, they say nothing about protein. It's, you know, no carbs, no, uh, no, basically anything sweet, mm -hmm. no sweet. You're going to be all good. And it's true. It's yeah. true. But like, I feel my body slowly dying every time that I do it. And I'm losing his weight, though. So, yeah. you know, it's a good trade off. Th that's all people care about. People don't care. That's all they care about, losing weight. They don't care. So, you yeah. Know, you, you find a balance that works for you and what your body responds to, and you do that. And I always tell people, don't start something you can't sustain. But that's what I'm saying. You can get a little strict at first, and then part of my responsibility is to prepare you to walk away from me someday. someday. I'm not going to let you pay me forever. I mean, I could, but. You should. I should just pay you. You need to learn something while you're here. Otherwise, you're going to stay in a cycle. And you can flexibly eat as you go forward. But initially, yeah, we're going to be a little strict. We'll slowly take the reins off as you figure it out. And then you learn how to maintain and how to cut when you start feeling a little, you know, loose. And then you <laughs> tighten it up and you go back into a maintenance phase and you go into a cutting phase. You want some muscle, you go into a bulking phase and you learn how to do those things and recenter yourself as you go. Okay, so. As opposed to losing 20 pounds and then you go eat, you know, a burger and, you know, so much for that. Yeah. So, okay, so you're saying a lot of things that, um, that a lot of us cool kids, we don't know because I, I, okay. I bet you, I bet you a lot of people are like me. They're like, hey, man, I'm going to lose this weight. You know, balls to the wall. I ain't eating nothing. And then because mm -hmm. I have a whole I have a whole lot of will, but it may not necessarily be in the smartest place. So, yeah. So say you're the um, say say you're me. I'm coming in like, hey, okay. I'm um, I used to, I used to wear a size 34. Now I'm in a size 42. That's not my real waist. Y'all, I'm just. Throwing out numbers. It's close. We'll though. go with that. Yeah. We'll it, go with that. It's close though. I ain't gonna lie. So all I know mm -hmm. is that I don't want to be jiggly anymore. I don't know anything else. 
Okay. How would you okay. how would you walk me through that? One, you have to wrap your mind around the idea that you can't out train a bad diet. Right? Mm. And beyond that, I always tell anybody, think of if you don't think of a goal, I'm gonna set one for you, and you're probably not gonna like mine, right? <laughs> I like that. Put the goal in pencil, because when we get there, we're gonna reassess it because you're probably not gonna like it. Because you have a, a, when I was 219, when I first had my kid, I just wanted to get down to 175. Got to 175, because in my mind, 175 looked a certain way, got there, didn't like it, had to reassess. Okay, 165. We'll see what 165 looks like. Got there, didn't like it. I'm, okay, I'm going to get to 155. I'm sorry. I've been holding that 155 I'm, I'm, for the longest. I'm sorry. And okay, Casey, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? <laughs> because... Mm-hmm. I felt my brain explode just a little bit. You said you, you got to 175 and you hit your goal and realized, man, I don't look like what I thought that I was going to look like. When I didn't I, like it. Wow. What in my mind, 175 in my mind was like, I was going to look like Meg Thee Stallion. But like for a while, if you go, like if I log into my Zoom for my laptop, it says Casey V Pony on my, my screen <laughs> On Zoom, because that's what I was going by. Because I was like, "What? They done brought big butts back. I'm win. I'm in. And I'm white skin. It's a wrap." Yep. Got to one seventy five and was like, "I got the nerve to still be fat. Mm. I'm not supposed to be fat at one seventy five. I had a I had a thing in my head. That's not how this is supposed to go." Okay, cool. We are gonna run on and see what one sixty five looked like. Got there and was like, "Are those back rolls?" As you lose weight and your body changes, mm. you start to become more aware of the things that you don't like and things that you want to change. Because 165 might mean that I'm physically smaller, but it doesn't mean that I have definition in my arms. And it doesn't mean that you can see the muscle in my legs because I need to get down to a certain size for those things to happen. And 165 ain't it. So you're a, you're, you're a, you just keep. Reassessing. Wow. What? I'm. Yeah. I'm. Tell me, hey, I want to be a what is it? What do men want? A thirty-six inch waist? Okay, cool. I will hundred percent tell you that we don't have pencil. We don't. I don't have pencil. Prove my point. We don't measure. We don't measure our waist. Dry erase marker. Because when we get there, and then you go, uh, I thought this is gonna look a little different. I bet you did. Man, that's that's so true because I we like, what? um I was saying that's so true because when I oh, okay my bad all right oh yeah there you go but you know what size your belt is yeah and don't man pants come in inches <laughs> yes man pants do oh, yes. okay <laughs> man pants I mean I've never bought man man pants but don't they come in inches they do come in inches yeah that's... okay yeah they See? do they do come in inches I okay I apologize. See? It's, it's, so you know, because you know what size pants you wear. So we're gonna go with that. Okay, it's Women's Month. I apologize, Black woman. For sure, two for two. Okay, man, that was so, Casey. That was so good. That was so good because yeah, you're you're right because you can lose the weight, and I think that's where a lot of us, um. I think that's where a lot of us um, th- we're disappointed in the results because mm-hmm. we lose the weight, but we're a smaller version of the way that we don't want to look. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and that's when we start fine tuning. And there's a there's a science to the fine tuning. You know, you you want that. Everybody, nobody wants to look bulky, but the look that you want to look is muscle. So we got to work on the muscle. If you've lost the fat, cool. You need some muscle. I always tell people, cardio will make the scale go down. Protein will make you fine. Because if you ever see people, they lose a whole lot of weight and they start looking, you know, they'll be like, ooh, is she on something? Ooh, is she sick? Yeah. <laughs> they're not getting enough protein. And they're doing a lot of cardio, but they're not strength training. So they're not getting stronger. They're just making the scale go down. Because Which I, it will. You can take a laxative and make your scale go down. But if you want to look a certain way, you have to eat a certain way. You have to work out a certain way. 
you have to get stronger to look toned and sculpted unless you're going to have surgery, which is fine. But I'm scared of needles, so I had to take the wrong way home. Can, can I ask you something? Terrified. <laughs> <laughs> the worst. Terrified. Let, okay, let me ask you something. Um, when you're... When a person is going through that journey, um, mm-hmm. they, how do you deal with them mentally? Because there's so much psychological stuff that goes with it. This is what I mean. I mean that um, most people, the kickoff to their journey is either, hey, I hate the way that I look. My clothes don't fit anymore. I feel mm-hmm. terrible. Or... I just came to the doctors and he told me that I'm going to die. Mm-hmm. None of them is a bright sunny day. Like, Oh, I think I'm going to shed 75 pounds. Right. So, um, most of us come in, um, some form of depression, uh, mm-hmm. some form of, um, I don't want to say self hatred, but not mm-hmm. feeling good about yourself. So, yeah. As, so as as we're going through that and and you on the other side already made it through knowing what they're going to go through like how do you help them through that mental part because that's what that's what most that's how most people uh quit like it's not so much the physical part but like you know it it drains them so much like yeah I can't do this anymore so how do you deal sure. with that I share and that's that's one thing that I don't think people realize. I tell people all the time, you can only get fine once, right? Once you get to that, like, what else is there? I'm still not technically where I want my body to be. So we're going together. I may be a little further up the road than you are, but I'm going with you. Mm. I still work out six days a week. Not because I think this is, this is not fun. I get it. I have a kid, postpartum depression, postpartum anxiety. COVID almost took me out. I was in here going through it. I lost my dad, got married, had a baby, and went through everything you could think of, probably all in about 365 days, right? I get it. Some days I don't physically feel like working out. I have to navigate through gym guilt in the back of my mind because my alarm just went off. So I know I'm supposed to be in the trap working out, and I'm sitting up here standing at the wall. I get it. I get kids. I have three bonus daughters in addition to the little No Limit Soldier that's in Labusi in that is sleep. <laughs> I, it, it's three more of those yeah. that are older than her and they're all girls. I get it. I got stuff. I got a full time job. I got a husband that's crazy. My mom lives around the corner. She drives me insane. I get all of it. And so we're going to go together. We're going to figure it out together. I'm going to give you some suggestions. And not do this because I can get, we're going to try this. We're going to see what happens. We're going to come back to the table and we're going to figure it out. And as long as you're willing to keep trying to figure it out, I'm going to keep trying to help you figure it out. Mm. That's it. I get it. I'm out here. I'm bloated. I I can tell you. I tell people all the time, if you're just trying to lose 10 pounds because you got a wedding to go to, hey, I know all the tips. I know all the good tricks to get you in that little bridesmaid's dress by Friday. We can do that. It ain't gonna laugh, but I can get you there. I know the cool but kids. But I get it. I'm a realist. I know the cool kids right now, they're like, you know, just just tell us the tips. <laughs> just tell us the tips. Listen, I, it's crazy when people are like, oh, you can't do all this. The crazy part is that little silly stuff that y'all see on the internet, it works. But it's intended for a good time, not a long time. Like that's mm. the part that people miss out on because they do slim fast for like a week and then it stops working after a week. Because it wasn't intended to work forever. You're supposed to do that because you got something to do this weekend. You're trying to be for the thing, not forever. And you, if you come in here and we've been going for 15 minutes and that's all you got, I'm good with that. I'm good with whatever you're good with. And I've had people crying on my floor. I had one lady, she felt like praying. It be that way sometimes. Whatever you, whatever you want, I'm on. And I'm right there with you the whole way through. What kind of trainer are you? Promise. I swear to God, she was laid out in the middle of my floor, crying, praying, having a full-fledged moment. I didn't do nothing 
but move back, give her a paper towel, and let the moment happen the way it happens. Start, start playing more than I can bear. <laughs> Listen, I think it was like some Fred Hammond playing or something in the background. It was like six o'clock in the morning. Like, and she thanked me for giving her the space to do that. I was, I'm on whatever you want. See, this if is you want Kirk Franklin, Todd Trippett, my new personal fave, Pastor Mike Jr. In the morning, I'm on that with you. If it's some trap music that you need and I need to pop gum because I'm on that too. Like, I'm on whatever type of time you want. But we're going to get there the same way, regardless. See, this is what I love about you. This I I love the fact that, just besides that you're an amazing person, um, just one of my favorites, you really are. Um, but what I love is that you make it about the person, not about you. For sure. Because most, yeah. I'm not going to say most, I'll say 78% of, of the trainers that are out there, it's like, this is what I do. You need to mold to me. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it, you suck and you're weak and you don't deserve my time. Um, I already feel terrible, <laughs> first of all. And like, now I don't want to come back. And what you just said right there knowing that like you're there with me like mm -hmm. i'm it it makes it it would make me want to come back it would make me want to come back let me let me ask you this for sure um what do what does the person because this is what the lunch table is the lunch table is lunch table is people that we have okay. these dreams, we have these goals, we have these things that we want to do, the things that God called us to do, this better version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it's always something that stops us. More times than not, it's it's ourselves. It's some version of ourselves. Mm -hmm. so, um, and what I love about you is that you were, you were a person that had every obstacle that we all have, but you somehow broke through to the other side and then you came sure. back and like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to dedicate a large portion of my life to help people who don't have the courage to start to start. What my question is, is what does the person who like, okay, you know, I'm not getting any younger. I need to make some changes, mm -hmm. but I cannot pull it together. What do you say to that person? I tell people to start small, right? Ain't nobody finna jump out there and work out twice a day, six days a week. It just doesn't happen that way, despite what Instagram is going to tell you. And that makes me so sad for people mm. because it is so easy to get discouraged seeing all these chicks with their leggings up their butt, you know, doing glute workouts. And they got you thinking that if you go do some of these crazy off the wall, these insane workouts that I'm watching going, oh my God, please don't do that. Stop, you're gonna hurt yourself. You don't need to lift heavy if you don't know what you're doing. You're gonna hurt yourself. I would rather you take it slow. Consistent progress is gonna last you longer than like that quick overnight, you've been doing some kind of insert a celebrity here, detox tea, you know, pooping out your insides for the last six days and you lost 10 pounds. You're going to have all that weight back by Friday, mm -hmm. right? Go walk. I tell people all the time, just go walk. Go walk for 30 minutes, turn your little, mine is dead, but I keep this thing on. I have to catch myself like, okay, Power Ranger, take this thing off. <laughs> uh, all the time, get your heart rate up consistently set a goal for yourself i started out working out for like 30 minutes four or five days a week now i work out twice a day six days a week and thing i'm gonna do i'm at home all day everybody can't do that i got a whole setup downstairs in the garage i just can go out there it's hot out there but <laughs> like i got a whole setup and it's expensive that takes time that takes money but you can walk outside for free especially if you're not like me and you don't have allergies I can't be outside right now. I would, I swell up. I'd be dead outside right now. <laughs> but most people, you can get outside and walk. 
you can get on YouTube. It's some really good free workouts on YouTube, and they're fun. Trap cardio is a personal favorite of mine on YouTube. It's fun. It's like black people Zumba. Mm. And it's really fun. It's a good time. And even take some group classes because sometimes people need that community. Yeah. Because it ain't just you. Everybody in there off beat. <laughs> I tell people all the time, don't get in your head thinking that you look stupid. And we all look stupid. I have bruises. I trip and fall. I have pulled things and the cable and the whole thing came crashing down on top of my head. We all look stupid in the gym, okay? Including me, and I'm a professional. I look stupid. It's fine. I don't record every workout because sometimes I really be out there struggling or looking dumb. It's fine. But you start somewhere small and you build on the small. And eventually, you got some really good results. Your consistency and discipline will take you way further than something that you saw on Instagram that they're not even doing anyway. They are oiling themselves with baby oil before they go in there. Mm. And they're not actually doing new workouts because nobody works their glutes five days a week. Yeah, five. Set, the, set the people free. Set the people free. Set yourself free today. You understand me? I spent half my time in my stories fussing. You're not going to get fine wearing scrunch butt leggings and doing glute workouts. Nobody does glute workouts every, every day. Nobody. And that don't even make you look fine. Upper body, which women hate, is actually what makes you look smaller. You are most, most black women already have a nice butt. Why are you always wearing your butt? This is what you want. Your hourglass starts at the top. Mm. But everybody wants to work their legs because that's the fun part, right? Get you some back muscles. You can't outwork back fat. You can't suck that in. I promise. I promise you cannot suck in back fat. Man. Hold on. Where's my... <laughs> Yo. Did not our hearts burn today? My <laughs> lord. <laughs> I, I feel... I hope the cool kids feel inspired. I hope they feel inspired. Um, um, cause it's it's time, man. We're we're not getting it's time. It. we're not getting any younger. We're we're not getting any younger, and this cholesterol is only going higher and higher. And I I I will not. I'm telling you, I will not be fifty on blood pressure pills. I'm not gonna do Listen. it. Listen. But Blood I'm, pressure pills, diabetes. All my grandparents are diabetic, I think. Yeah. But all I, my grandparents are diabetic. But I love my zebra cake, so I gotta resolve that. I don't I don't know. All things in moderation. I keep a snack. If I look hard <laughs> enough, it's a candy bar in this house somewhere. I ain't gonna hold you. My kid likes Chick-fil-A. I did manage to teach her that McDonald's was nasty though. I really did. And Popeye's. I was like, ooh, that's nasty. So now when we drive by, she goes, mommy, that's nasty. Yep, that's nasty. Boo -boo, they're nasty. Until she had a chicken sandwich. But like, snap. No. I went and got some red beans and rice one day, and it was a hair in it, and I, my life ain't been the same since. Well, well, that's Houston. Um, that's Houston. No, no, no. That's Popeye's. And it was the I'm one sorry. Popeye's that's at the entrance to my neighborhood. I ain't been back since. I can't. Ugh. Oh, 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 God. Oh, anyway. But, yeah, like... You can have those things. You can enjoy yourself. I eat out a lot because I don't like to clean up and wash dishes. My family is from Marshall, and my dad's side of the family is from Bay City. I got like 12 aunts just off the top of my head that I can recall. Everybody cooks soul food. Like, that's a thing. So I'm, I'm going to eat. Mm. But I'm mindful, right? So I know... I'm going to go run real quick before I go to my auntie's house because I know that what type of time she on when I get there. I know she ain't got no salad. <laughs> no, baby, you ain't got no salad. Ain't no salad. No, and the salad you eat at a restaurant, they're not healthy anyway. You might as well eat something else and enjoy it. Stop crushing my dreams. Swear. Real quick. Swear. Because Swear. I really think Swear. I'll be doing something. I have a friend that loves those, what is it, the seafood salad from Papa Do's? Oh, oh, come on. And she used to send me the picture. Like, eh, ew, look, salmon and shrimp, I think, or whatever is on it. So I could probably pull up the menu because I'm a Capricorn. So I, I, I deal in facts. I 
pull the thing up, sell it like 900 calories. Girl, that's half your calories for one day in one meal. And the bulk of the calories is sugar because that thing got like three different kinds of dressing on it. That, that little salad not healthy. Get your dressing on the side, put half of it on the salad. Then you probably got something healthy. Papa, Maybe. Papa those smells like grease. Like it's just, it's the it's it's the bad part of the ocean, is what Papa Do's is. Listen, listen. Some places I feel like the calories just don't count. Look, you already know we going over the calorie count for the day when we go in here, so we are gonna save it for special occasions. Yep. It's just saying. When I'm on vacation, hey, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, Casey. Um, how can we find you? How can, because somebody, I know that there's somebody uh, who heard this today and uh, they're like, oh man, okay. Number one, I'm going to move down to Houston and come find you. But if, if I can't, if I'm on parole and I can't leave my house, then I'm going, I'm going to internet stock you and you're going to work this back, back out, back, fat off. How are we going to find you? You can find me on Instagram at the fly girl. That is my real name, by the way. Uh, or the Fly Girl Fitness. You can find me on Facebook under the same Fly Girl Fitness. Or you can use this name, Casey Coleman. I think I think my name on Facebook is Casey Fly Coleman. I think. <laughs> uh, but for sure, I'm I'm usually on Instagram. You can find me at the Fly Girl. I'm over there fussing and popping gum most days out of the week. I have to take a break. Social media stresses me out. So. Uh hate social media i, I hate oh, i it's hate the it's the worst like it's so it's, worst. it's so much pressure for you to be there mm-hmm. and and when you're not and algorithms and all this oh, i'm gonna I, I'll, I'll tell you something um i'll tell you something um once once we uh wrap up wrap up the lunch table how I've I've beat the algorithm. I figured it out, and I'm not. Sw- Text me. I'm not. Because... I'm, I'm not sweating. <laughs> I'm not going crazy. You know what? It's the lunch. T- no, I'm not gonna tell y'all. We'll, we'll once we get to ten thousand downloads, maybe I'll tell y'all. But before then, no. Nah. For sure. Y'all just got to keep on coming back. Cause I'm this close to paying somebody to run mine. I'm, no. I'm, I'm right there on the edge. Just. Follow me, shoot it. I don't care what it is, and post it, and just <laughs> leave me alone. I don't want to. Um, I just don't want to. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you. I'm, I'm gonna tell you once we get off. You know what? I'm gonna wrap this up because me and Casey got to talk, and we're gonna, we're gonna change your life. But for sure. Listen, and then this is the cool part about podcasts. Podcast, podcast live forever, and there's mm-hmm. probably gonna be somebody who's going to be listening to this episode like three years from now. And, and that's the, it's the funny thing about progress. It, it has no time. Like three years from now, there's going to be somebody like, Oh man, he, he, he's right about those zebra cakes. Let me, let me go find Casey. So. Cause I'm that one person listening to old podcasts. It's me. It is me. I'm still watching episodes of Dr. Phil from like 2014. Don't ask. It, it, it happened. I don't know. But it's me. Like I'm watching. If if a podcast is good, I'm going all the way back. I'm starting from the top. Yep. Let's run it and see what happens. Yeah. Same here. So so don't change any of your handles for like three years because somebody's going to oh, find God, you. No. <laughs> then I forget my passwords and then what are we going to do? <sighs> what? Man, I got the same password. Let me stop <laughs> Hello, man. If somebody hack. If somebody find my one password, we're all in trouble because they got my whole life. Listen, cool kids. I hope y'all had a wonderful time, Casey. Thank you so much for coming in and changing our lives. Um, we'll have you back. I know we will um, because somebody's somebody's world is going to be changed. Some somebody is going to have the strength and the motivation to start. Absolutely. All you got to do is start. The hardest part is starting. Hardest part is starting. Hardest part is starting. So, uh, Casey, thank you so much again. Uh, Stay on because we'll we'll, we'll talk. But, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a wonderful show. 
Uh, thank you so much, Casey Cole, for helping us to lose his back fat because that's what we're going for. Hey, however you're listening, how wherever you're at, this is the lunch table. I'm your boy Gerald Davis. This is the lunch at the Cool Kids. Y'all get it. I'm gonna get it right one time. All right, peace.